Hi there. I am Lady Pearl and this is Electric Sheep episode 5. And today we're going to learn the knit stitch. I wanted to separate the knit stitch and the purl stitch into two different videos because although once you learn those you essentially know how to knit entirely, it can be kind of frustrating trying to do them both together. So you should master the knit stitch and then gradually go into the purl stitch That'll also be frustrating because it's doing the knit stitch backwards, but once you've got those two down, you'll be set to go. Uh, I usually start off my um, episodes with my current projects. I just finished a bunch of projects, so I'm actually starting a new one, but I don't even have it cast on yet. Um, I'm making a little stuffed owl for my sister's sister-in-law, uh, but I did just finish this hat. It is super cute and sparkly. I don't know if the sparkles are really going to show up in the video. But I spun the yarn myself out of roving that I dyed, inspired by um, Frozen. Uh, Frozen's kind of old hat now. <laughs> old hat. Uh, but <laughs> but um, I, I had dyed the yarn last year, or dyed the roving last year, and I put it up on Etsy and I don't know. It just probably wasn't all that appealing, but um, when I when I blended it with a whole bunch of Stellena, I actually did the darkest part, which is the very top, I did with dark like sapphire blue Stellena, and then I did turquoise in the middle to kind of match the color, and then I did silver at the end, and it's just really neat, and it's a cute little tam. I will wear it this winter, I'm sure. I spent way too long on it to sell it though because I spent a lot of time on that yarn making it and then knitting it so it's mine I made it for myself <laughs> no regrets uh, but yeah my business is going well I haven't made a video in a while because I've really been trying to focus on making my Lady Pearl Designs uh, site my Etsy store like have more than just yarn I'm developing a lot of new fun colorways, but like I wanted to have multiple things in my store that would be that would draw a lot more people. So I started to do this is one thing. I made a Lady Pearl Designs Doctor Who inspired knitting pattern book, and so I have uh, three patterns in here. One is a bow tie, um, so it's like a headband bow tie. Just kind of fun. Uh, one is a hat, which I actually probably have right here. A beaded tam hat, very actually similar in construction to that uh, let it go hat. <laughs> but it's got a whole bunch of beads in it, which is pretty fun. Uh, and I wanted it to kind of look like the night sky constellations. So it's starry hat, which I called the Andromeda hat. And then also my um, What's it called? Uh, Doomsday Gloves, which look like that. Do, do, do. So those are fun. Um, so I, can't, I put it all into a little cute zine, and I'm selling it for five bucks. So three patterns, five bucks, all Doctor Who inspired, uh, which I thought would be fun, and I kind of want to do a whole bunch of them. You know, maybe a Doctor Who and a... Sir, uh, Firefly and Serenity inspired one. Um, just my favorite fandoms. Maybe a Sherlock one and a... I don't know. If you have any ideas, let me know in the comments because I don't want to necessarily take something from the fandom that's already knit up and, and do it. Uh, I kind of want to take inspired by. You know, like the Andromeda hat is the night sky, but Doctor Who travels through the night sky, so it kind of made sense for me. And um, he wears a bow tie, so I knit a bow tie. Um, but it's not something necessarily, like, I don't want to put a Jane hat pattern in there. You know, I'm not going to take something from the show. It's just going to be inspired by patterns that anyone could use, and they're not necessarily super geeky to wear. Um, I also started doing felted soaps, which have been so much fun. And I've actually been using them every day, too, just to make sure that my product is, I don't know, Make sure that I like it, because I'm not going to sell something I don't like. Uh, this one, speaking of Frozen, I actually used some of the roving that I was making to spin that hat, 
and put it into um, the soap first. And so you actually like, there's a bunch of YouTube tutorials that I actually looked at to, to make these, but you wrap the soap, and I just took a regular bar of soap, um, in roving and then felt it onto the bar of soap itself. And I actually put sparkles in mine because I do that. And then, um, and they've been gaining interest, I think, by winter because they're just a really cute little um, gift. They'll probably be getting a lot more interest, but and then this one I actually took like string roving that almost kind of looks like yarn, but not quite. It's looks like this. I'm spinning it right now. I took that and wrapped it around the soap and felted it, and it kind of made this really cool, um, what I called rainbow bright soap. So that was really awesome. I'm digging that. I think that would be a really fun one um, to use, but then I just put a little um, label on with an explanation, because if you don't know what felted soaps are, I have felted soap eliminates the need for a washcloth or loofah. Um, the, while using the soap, suds form through the wool and wash while exfoli exfoliating the skin. They last a lot longer and especially nice in the winter months when your skin is dry and itchy. So that is fun. I've just started doing that. I only have like less than 10 right now because I'm just trying it out. And then I am also trying out awesome, cute bags. So this is one of my um, knitting bags. I specifically chose this sewing pattern because you can wear it while walking and your knitting can be coming out of the pouch and you can just knit on the go. Um, I use one that I made that was smaller than this because this one's fairly sizable. Um, I use one all the time just for all my knitting notions and like a little scissors and um, and my yarn and needles and stuff like that. And then I started making these little guys as well, which are just also little like knitting needle notion bags. They could probably fit a small um, project, but could be used for anything and it could just be used as a clutch because that's what it is. But I also, I got some really cute fabric from Joann's that was uh, Star Wars, Wonder Woman, Doctor Who, you name it. They actually have come out with a whole new line of Nintendo stuff too, which I haven't seen in the stores yet, but I'm really excited about it. So that's what's going on with me. Um, let's get to the tutorial. All right, and I'm going to just simply start off with 10 stitches to practice. Uh, if you do not know how to cast on, that is the episode 4 of Electric Sheep, so go back, uh, pause this video, and watch that now. But I just cast on a simple, like, around the thumb cast on method, 10 stitches, and I'm going to start knitting. So you want to start with your knitting pretty close to the edge, but not too close that it's going to fall off. So, around, you know close to where it stops tapering and you're gonna find the best way to hold it for you and the first couple times you try it's gonna be really awkward but I hold my yarn and knitting like this you know I've seen it multiple ways but I also throw my yarn some people wrap it around their fingers and kind of um, pick their yarn up as they go I don't think that's as easy but if you want a challenge one day, I will show you how to do what is called continental knitting, which is picking it up from being wrapped around your finger. Alright, so first stitch, you're going to kind of make it a little bit looser so that you can get in there. And you want to go from the left front of the stitch, put it through that stitch, making an X with your needles. Hold them with your thumb and uh, and pointer finger like that. That's the easiest way to do it, in my opinion. Then you can be free with your right hand to grab the back yarn, wrap it around the right needle, and that's going in a clockwise motion. And then what is going to happen is you're going to see where you wrapped that yarn is going to be right in between the two needles. So that's that yarn there. You bring it through that loop, then you have another loop on the right hand needle. 
and you can inch the left one off. Your, your instincts are going to say, pull it tight and make this huge hole in the middle. And that is going to be really bad for your knitting. And I'll show you why. It's going to make a big loop down here. It's going to be awkward and ugly. But that is how it's going to happen when you first start. Just because it always does. It always will. So we're going to do, do this a couple more times. Go in from the left front to the back. Wrap it around in a clockwise motion and bring the yarn through that loop to make a loop on the right hand needle and slide it off. So left front to kind of right back area. Make an X, loop it around and go through the hole. Practice makes perfect and of course it's going to be a little frustrating and feel like you are just don't have enough hands to make this happen but you do and it can go really fast if you want it to really starting off slow it's perfectly acceptable making sound noises also helps I think it helps <clears throat> all right so when you are all set and done first row is gonna look a little something like this nothing too fancy it's just one row and when you are knitting your project always should be on the left needle so literally when you are done you just flip it around and then now it's on your left needle so we could start knitting again when you knit on one side and then purl on the other that is knitting when you knit on one side and then knit on the other that is garter stitch and because we're practicing knitting we're going to practice garter stitch because we're going to knit on both sides that makes a much more uh kind of stretchy and textured pattern but it does not doesn't look like regular knitting that's for sure so after you have knit for a little while and I would say practice by doing 10 rows or so I believe this is one, two, three, four, five, six, around six or seven rows it's gonna look like this so as you can see, this doesn't really look like a regular um, knitted sweater. It looks kind of bumpy. That's what garter stitch looks like. Uh, it's really stretchy. If you're a nerd like me, the Doctor Who scarf is all garter stitch. So if you want a really easy but really long pattern to start with, you can make a scarf. A huge, huge blanket scarf with um, Doctor Who colors. So um, if you have this or something similar with a lot of holes and loose yarn, then you're doing it right. <laughs> um, I hope this helped. We're gonna do the purl stitch next and uh, that's going to make an entirely different look and I'm excited for that. Uh, follow me on Facebook. I'm Lady Pearl Designs over on Facebook. I am on Instagram and Tumblr as Lady Pearl and subscribe here for more videos and please comment on anything that you could want me to demonstrate for you in the future because I'm excited to keep doing more videos and hopefully on a more regular basis. <laughs> All right, bye.